Hello and welcome back to PC Retro Tech. At the end of the previous video, I left you on quite a cliffhanger. I was trying to get smooth scrolling working on my IBM Model 30 with its MCGA implementation. So MCGA is a kind of proto VGA that IBM introduced. Uh, it's just like CGA with an extra 256 color mode. And I was having trouble getting the scrolling to work. Well, you remember that the way that we're trying to do smooth scrolling is by changing the start address every frame. Uh, what we were doing was modifying the CRT controller register that's responsible for telling the adapter where to start reading pixel information from in video memory. And it turns out that you can effectively modify this by two bytes at a time, which should give us a scroll of two pixels at a time, so long as we're prepared to go and clean up the two pixels that are scrolled in on the other side of the screen. But as you can see, it's not working the way that we expect. I had a fast version of this working in the previous video, and I just assumed that there was a bug in my code, uh, or some kind of timing issue. Uh, but I've written since then this very slow version, which gives it plenty of time to settle down into the new start address. And I still have the same problem with every fourth scan line being shifted somehow. You get one frame that's good, then a few frames that are slightly messed up on the right hand side, and then immediately a bunch of frames that are all completely messed up. Uh, it turns out that this same pattern repeats every 32 shifts. And this strongly indicates to me that there's actually a problem with the adapter, not with my code. So uh, this raises a few questions. Uh, first of all, is there really a problem with the MCGA adapter? If there is, then that would certainly explain why games like Revenge of Defender don't work properly on MCGA. Uh, but you guys also had some questions, as it did I at the end of the previous video. Uh, first of all, maybe we can trick the uh, MCJ into working by fiddling with the screen geometry. And you guys asked, what happens if we try a different adapter? Uh, I certainly know this works with CJ, that's how I know about this trick. But uh, maybe we could use an VJ adapter and see whether that works. After all, it supports the MCJ mode, right? Another question is, maybe there's something wrong with this particular Model 30. Maybe I should try a different one. And maybe there's something wrong with the particular revision of MCGA. And a final question is, maybe we can come up with an image that actually looks okay, even with the uh, defects that are there. Uh, we'll just put up with what we've got and see if we can work around it. Uh, so those are the questions that I want to try and answer in today's video. Well, first of all, let's check if there was a problem with the particular Model 30. So I've pulled my parts machine out of the cellar, and from memory it just needs a working floppy drive in it, and we should be able to power it up and see whether the MCGA in that is any better. Now I guess from memory what I have to do is clip the cover off the floppy drive, and then the drives themselves should just clip out. I guess that's one of the nice things about these machines. It's just a shame that they're proprietary drives and you can't buy them anywhere. That should do the trick. Let's plug it all up and power it on and see what happens. Well, this is the result, so crossing our fingers, and it's not looking good. I see lines coming through on the right hand side, and yeah, exactly the same behavior. How about that, folks? So, yeah, MCGA really has a problem with changing the start address. Who would have thought? So I guess the next thing to try is a VGA card and see whether this works with VGA. Well, if you're a regular viewer of the channel, you recognize my Compact 386S machine sitting in the middle there next to my Amstrad PC1512 at the end. And the Compact has a 386SX processor, but it also has a custom VGA implementation by Compact themselves. So I think it's going to be an interesting thing to try out and see whether Compaq went to the trouble of implementing this start address thing uh, in the way that we expect it to work. 
uh, or whether they also just ignore it or have some kind of issue. Well, here's the result, and so far I'm not seeing any issues. Uh, let's let it scroll across for 32 clicks and see whether or not it's perfect. Uh, it looks okay to me. I think it's actually working. Well, isn't that interesting? So Compaq did implement this scrolling mechanism using the start address, and IBM did not. Uh, so that has me mystified, but at least it shows that the code itself is not the cause of the problem. Uh, we really have a problem with the adapter in the Model 30. And yeah, I would say that looks exactly right. So I think we have to try out a real VGA card now uh, in a machine and see whether or not we get the same thing or not. Just for comparison, here's the original code running at full speed on the Compaq. And it's not perfect, but at least it's nice smooth scroll. Uh, I do actually have a little problem also with the loading of the bitmap file. There's a discontinuity across the screen in three places. Uh, so I'm going to have to fix that. But uh, it looks like uh, it's scrolling just great. Next thing I'm going to do is try this Paradise 88 chipset VGA card. And I'm going to put this in a 286. So I'll just use a random 286 machine for this. Uh, obviously the Paradise card is a very early VGA card, so uh, that should give us a good idea whether this was widely supported in VGA or not. Well, everything seems to be working just fine with the Paradise 88 chipset, and that doesn't surprise me too much. After all, there are a lot of VGA games that had perfectly good horizontal smooth scrolling. Now, of course, in the planar modes, things are more complicated because your pixel information is now scattered across four bit planes, and you don't get the fine control that you need just by changing the start address. Uh, you get a lot more pixels per byte uh, in terms of just memory address space. And so for that reason, the VGA cards had an additional register called the horizontal Pell panning register, which gave you back control on a per pixel basis uh, in the horizontal direction. And so that's what uh, you would have to use if you wanted to have smooth scrolling in any of those modes. Uh, it even works apparently in the 256 color mode. So uh, that means that VGA is just fine. Uh, so we should go back to MCJ now and see whether we can figure out a way around the problems that we're having. And also up front, I have no idea whether we can or not. Uh, but I'm going to try out a few different ideas and see what we can come up with. So the first thing that I've done here is to write a program to change the number of horizontal characters displayed on the screen. So the way these CRT controllers work is that they still view graphics as characters. And I don't really know how many characters wide the screen will be, so I need to figure that out. So I started off with a value of 20. This is in register 1 of the CRT controller, which is the horizontal displayed and uh, I have to unwrite protect that first so that's done by changing a bit in uh, register 10 uh, but I've started off with a value of 20 characters displayed across the screen it's still the same image in video RAM and uh, we won't get our original image back until we get out to the right number of characters so I've set it up so that every time I press a key it will increase the number of characters by one and so we'll be able to count them and figure out how many characters wide the screen is. So it looks like it's going to be 40, but let's just check that. Uh, so this is 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 36, 37, 38, 39, 39. Well, that's interesting. I would have expected a round number like 40, not 39. So my guess is that it's actually adding one to whatever value you supply, which is rather intriguing. Uh, that suggests that there's some special value somewhere that does something else. Uh, at any rate, uh, so 39 it is. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is change the size of the actual image in video RAM as well, uh, so that we see the right image the whole time. It just won't be as much of it. And uh, then we'll check that that works. And once we've got that working, then we'll change into uh, the start address function, which will change the start address 
to one of the dodgy start addresses and we'll see if changing the number of characters across the screen can actually fix the start address problem that we're having. So this time I start at 39 characters wide and every time I hit a key it'll both reduce the number of characters displayed and it'll change the size of the image. So we should still see the same image if everything's working. And there are some lines going across that. That's very interesting. Uh, so that's not what I was expecting to happen. We are seeing the right image but uh, some of these are actually displaying artifacts uh, which is really bizarre, not at all what I would have expected to happen. Well here goes, we've got a value of 31 now for the number of characters which means 32 wide uh, which is actually 256 pixels and every time I press a key now it's going to try and change the start address. So let's just see what happens. Oh my goodness, look at that! It works! Oh boy, so we can get smooth scrolling at 256 pixels wide. Well, I wonder if anyone knows this or whether this is new. That is quite a find. I'm really pleased about that. Okay, so we've got something. So now what I need to do is fix all the bugs in my program and make a fast version of this and uh, then we can see whether we can get a smooth scrolled 256 pixel wide image. Now I will have to move the image a little bit more into the center of the screen but that should just be a matter of changing the sync pulses unless of course that's broken but we'll see. Uh, and this is a really fun experiment at this point. Uh, I really did not expect this to work at all, so uh, anything we get from here is a bonus. Well, I seem to mostly have it working now. I've just got it running on a loop, so you'll see it black out at the end as it resets. Uh, I got rid of the line through the middle of the image, the discontinuity. That was to do with the way that Turbo C allocates buffers uh, in fast segments. It doesn't actually uh, allocate them at offset zero in the segment. So I just had to make a small adjustment for that. Uh, I also had a line running down the left hand side of the image in the previous video and I've got rid of that. Uh, it turns out that you need to update the start address in the active area uh, when it starts actually drawing pixels uh, for the next frame. And so I had that incorrect and uh, so now that's working. Uh, the only remaining issue really is that every now and again it bounces and uh, this is to do with the MCGA as far as I can tell. Uh, I can't trace it down to anything in my code. Uh, but yeah, we seem to have smooth scrolling and I totally think you could use this in a game. Uh, it's a little bit narrower of course than the full 320 pixels. Uh, I've taken effectively four characters off each side. Uh, I did adjust the uh, horizontal sync pulse so that it would be more centered and uh, yeah it seems to be uh, a little bit narrower but uh, not too bad uh, so yeah really surprising discovery that this all worked in the end uh, very great fun to work on and play with uh, so hopefully you also enjoyed watching this and if you did uh, don't forget to give a like on the video and uh, consider subscribing to the channel. There'll be more of this kind of content in the future. Uh, that's all I actually have time for this week. Uh, so thanks very much for watching and we'll see you in a later video. Bye.